In the 1990s, AOL Instant Messenger, more commonly known as AIM, had the world in its hands. It's safe to say that it defined an era and heavily shaped the internet as we know it today. In its heyday, it had more than 36 million active users, which may not sound like a lot, but at the time it made up a staggering 50% of the online messaging market. Now, I'm willing to bet a lot of you watching can remember all the little details of AIM. The away messages, the cringy usernames, but it seems like collectively as a culture, we've just moved on. And it begs the question, whatever happened to AIM? Hi everyone, my name is Otto and welcome to Exits Examined. We'll be exploring the lives of people, companies, and more after their prime time has seemingly come to an end. If that sounds good to you, there's a subscribe button below. During the dial-up days of the late 1990s, the internet was a frustrating, slow, and confusing place. Web pages crawled, emails took ages to arrive, and to message someone, you often had to navigate clunky message boards. People wanted a faster, more private way to communicate easily online. And I mean, I think we take this for granted now, but at the time, this service literally just didn't exist. Now, AOL is maybe best known for their famous use of marketing with a ridiculous number of CDs, but the web portal itself was really revolutionary at the time because a lot of people didn't even know what the internet was, much less how to use it. So AOL jumped in and attracted millions of users with its accessible design, features, and iconic You've Got Mail alerts. In fact, they were so successful that they would eventually go on to have a peak value of over $224 billion in 2000. As the company's success exploded, new features and ideas were explored, and one of these was the Buddy List. Created by Barry Appleman and apparently just one other programmer, in 1994, this simple feature allowed users to see if their friends were online. And this would turn out to be the foundation for AIM. Actually, internally, many people at AOL hated the buddy list and referred to it as the stalker feature because they were pretty uncomfortable with their coworkers knowing when they were online. Despite this, inspired by the buddy list success, Appleman and a team of like-minded developers started work on an instant messaging program. They faced a ton of skepticism and even outright opposition from AOL executives. Basically, people at the company were worried about cannibalization as AOL had built their business model around charging fees for their services and executives thought that giving away their software for free was just completely crazy. In hindsight, it's kind of ironic because that's after all what made the company so successful in the first place was those free CDs. AIM was quietly released in the spring of 1997 and allowed users to register an online handle and chat with friends in near real time. AIM was free, fast, and simple. And it resonated with people, which kind of came as a huge shock to the AOL executives. What started as a little rebellious side project quickly became a cultural phenomenon. But what is it that makes AIM so special? Well, I think for one, it was the amount of customization it offered. Whether it was experimenting with god-awful fonts, crafting quirky usernames, or pinning away messages, AIM became a canvas for self-expression and identity. Another huge one was its simplicity and accessibility. The entire service was not only free, but also incredibly user-friendly for the era. Setting up an account and going straight to messaging just took a few minutes, so anyone could do it. Finally, and this one might be a bit surprising, is the privacy aspect. In an age where households often only had one computer, the personal login feature allowed users to keep their conversations private from prying eyes whether it was from parents, coworkers, whoever. This was a revolutionary shift from the norm, considering that prior messaging systems were often confined to public online boards. It had this sense of intimacy and was a relatively safe space to explore your identity. At the peak of its popularity, AIM wasn't just a chat app, it became its own culture. It's also impossible to ignore how it played a huge role in shaping digital communication as a whole and just how people basically express themselves online. A lot of this comes down to its impact on teen culture at the time. 
AIM became the meetup spot for millions of young adults and all the things that come with it, like first crushes and unfiltered angst. And through this, it kind of birthed its own language. BRB, G2G, and of course ones that are still used to this day like LOL and BTW all became pretty commonplace and widely accepted during this period. AIM continued its meteoric rise in the early 2000s, with users soaring to 61 million and its staff ballooning to over 100. While it has to be said that MSN was mostly used in other countries, AIM reigned supreme in the US, becoming commonplace in offices and homes alike. And remarkably, despite reluctance from AOL executives, AIM somehow remained free. But the good times would not last forever. As the internet evolved, so did its communication needs, and social media giants like Facebook and MySpace would take off. These platforms offered more than just one-on-one -on -one chats. They were complete digital communities. And this made things much easier. Since you're already connected to everyone you know, you can just start up a chat without things like screen names. But I think the real missed opportunity was when cell phones arrived, AIM fumbled. Smartphones and apps like WhatsApp and iMessage would fill this void and go on to capture the market in a way AIM would just fail to do. It's actually fascinating to think what if smartphones had developed first before your traditional brick phones. AIM was already positioned as a leader in online chat and could have easily adapted and become the go-to messaging on mobile, maybe even coming pre-installed on most phones. But the brick phones of the late 90s paved the way for text messaging controlled by the telecom giants, leaving AIM stranded. But even within the desktop domain, AIM struggled to innovate. Its interface, while familiar and beloved, remain largely unchanged. While other apps adopted sleek, intuitive designs, AIM stuck with its iconic but slightly clunky aesthetics, and also there was a real lack of focus on marketing during this time. This stagnation reflected a larger issue. AOL, AIM's parent company, was kind of drowning in its own woes. A pretty disastrous merger with Time Warner and the dot-com crash left the company reeling and with fewer resources to invest in its flagship product. In 2012, AOL ended employment of AIM's development staff, but it would hobble along until 2017. Then, with just a handful of users remaining, the once mighty service finally shut down after two decades, with the company citing a cultural shift in the way people communicate. But that actually wasn't the end of the story. Following the closure of the original AIM, a non-profit gaming development team called Wildman Productions took the reins and resurrected the app as AIM Phoenix. Since it's no longer affiliated with AOL, there's actually no access to your old buddy list or messages. However, aside from that, it's pretty much a recreation of the old AIM software. That being said, honestly, the setup is not so simple, and as of the making of this video, it seemed like the entire operation has had some difficulties, and I don't even think the Discord server is on as far as I could tell. Honestly, I tried to register and I couldn't even do it. But fear not, because there's also another group called Nina, which is trying to revive AIM, AOL, and MSN. And as of 2024, it's pretty close to public launch. I checked this out a bit more, and it looks like right now it's working, but only available to donors. So check it out if you are so inclined. Culturally, AIM has left a big impact on the world of media, in films and even games. In 2015, Emily is Away was released, and it's a game, but actually more of a text story. It's a really interesting look at the cultural and emotional aspect of AIM, and all it is is just you messaging a girl called Emily on AIM. But despite that, it's a really interesting take, and I would never think that AIM would be gamified in this way. But it's a surprisingly heartfelt story, and if you're interested, it's available on Steam. And that about brings us to the current day. So whatever happened to AIM? Well, in many ways, it never went away. It set the stage on how communication online is conducted. It pioneered buddy list and instant messaging as a whole. Mark Zuckerberg has made no secret that AIM was the inspiration for Facebook. Actually, many of its features like news feeds and status updates are direct copies from AIM. 
It's interesting to think about if AOL execs had put their full support into AIM or if they had targeted the mobile market, things could have easily turned out differently and AIM very well might have been what WhatsApp is today. It was really interesting that when AIM shut down in 2017, there was kind of this collective mourning that the internet had. And it's no surprise because it pretty much taught us how to socialize online. People have moved on, but despite that, AIM's legacy is still as strong as ever and lives on in the way we connect and communicate online every day. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support as I try to get this channel off the ground. If you want to do more to support me, please check out my Patreon in the links below. And as always, if you ever have any suggestions about what you want me to cover next, just drop a comment. I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.